So ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about former Quebec Nordiques and former WHA players in our recent podcast. But if I told you there's a former Nordique, the original Nordiques, who played uh, with the Winnipeg Jets before the WHA Winnipeg Jets occurred in the early 1970s, given almost 50 years of hockey, and you're saying, okay, don't hold me in suspense, Jeffrey, please tell me who it is. Of course, today we're going to talk about the legacy of the great Paul Baxter. Now, Paul Baxter, born October 28, 1955 in Manitoba, uh, Winnipeg, of course, uh, played in the major leagues from 79 to 87, but uh, skated for a number of seasons in the WHA before his uh, time in the NHL. Now, Paul Baxter came to heavy prominence uh, because of his WCHL uh, career. Now, uh, 5'11", uh, 195, 200 pounds. He was a right shot on defense, which was very important at the time because you're seeing more and more teams trying to be resilient uh, for the right defensive shot. Now, his heavy prominence came with the Winnipeg Monarchs of the MJHL, but he put up some really solid numbers. 31 points in 44 games, but he was... Paul was known to also being an enforcer. He had 359 minutes and penalties, ladies and gentlemen, in 44 games. Nearly 10 a contest, so you can tell he was pretty rough. Now, he did play for the Winnipeg Jets in the WCHL that year. and 74, he continued with the Winnipeg Club, called the Clubs in the WCHL, with 40 points in 63 games. Now, he was drafted in a 1975 draft after uh, playing uh, with the Crusaders and the Cape Codders uh, that year. 1975, he was taken 49th overall by the Penguins, his future team, and 11th overall by the Cleveland uh, Crusaders. Now, he decided to go with the Crusaders, ladies and gentlemen, and that's where he had his rookie season in 76, with three goals and seven assists for 10 points. Now, he was a good defenseman, but he was also a partial enforcer. Now, because the Crusaders couldn't sign him, uh, the uh, the fall, uh, excuse me, he was drafted in 1974 by the Crusaders. Now, because he uh, couldn't uh, uh, couldn't make the uh, clear Crusader squad, uh, Baxter joined the Quebec Nordiques of the WHA in '76. And uh, when the Nordiques joined the NHL, he was uh, made a priority selection by Quebec, preventing Pittsburgh from reclaiming him. Now, his uh, seasons with the WHA were very impressive. He was part of the 77 Avco Cup team that won the Avco, uh, won the league championships in 77 with 23 points in 66 games, including 4 points in 12 playoff games. 78 and 79, he had some great totals with the Nordiques. His best uh, season was 79 with 46 points in 76 games. Now, the initial uh, season with the Nordiques, uh, he stay, stayed with them, uh, but eventually found his way back to the Pittsburgh program. And with Pittsburgh, ladies and gentlemen, he was the heavy enforcer for the Penguins and probably their, their most, not say violent team, but their most aggressive. His second season with Pittsburgh, he, he played enough to get 43 points in 70 to 76 games, but 409 minutes in penalties, ladies and gentlemen which was an average, of course, of more than uh, five a game. So he was fighting every game or every second game. Now, he eventually ended up in Calgary, and he was part of uh, that great Stanley Cup run in 86 with uh, seven points in a regular season and 13 uh, playoff games. Now, Baxter's style was a combination of enforcer and uh, strong uh, defender, and he put up some really impressive totals, ladies and gentlemen. Now, he had a combined uh, almost 800 games in the WHA in a regular season and 70 in the playoffs. He has dub- NHL totals, 169 points in 472 games, including 48 goals. WHA, 25 goals in 290 games, 114 points. And in the playoffs, where he really excelled actually for uh, the, uh, the Nordiques, he was a playoff performer for sure, uh, with 15 points in 23 games in these first two playoffs with Quebec. He eventually ended up with uh, 6 goals and 11 assists for 17 points. Now, Baxter's career as a hockey uh, uh, developer uh, is kind of believed something because 
the WHA record for most penalty minutes uh, belongs to him. And uh, he ended up with 1,564 penalty minutes in the NHL. Uh, he's also the single season leader for the Penguins again for with that 409. Now, after hockey or, you know, on the ice, he can continue his career as a coach. He uh, joined the Sa Salt Lake Golden Eagles of IHL and led him to the Turner Cup in 87-88. Now, in 89, he became an assistant coach with Calgary, stayed there until 92. 92-95, he was assistant coach there. 95-97, head coach of the St. John Flames. 97-2000, assistant coach with the San Jose Sharks. 01-03, assistant coach with the Florida Panthers. Then he moved over to Finland as head coach of HIFK, a very popular squad, 2006, 2006 and 2008. 8-10, uh, he was with the Wittichi Wild of the NAHL as head coach. Then he ended up with Wichita Falls Wildcats of the NHL, NAHL from 11 to 14. Now, uh, at Wichita Falls, he was head coach, general manager, and part owner. He put his money where his mouth was, of course. He left his operational positions for the Wildcats in 2016 while remaining part owner. And unfortunately, the team seized, uh, ceased operations at the end of the season. Now, Baxter and his wife live in Tennessee. And, uh, of course, a very deserving member as well of a very prestigious Hall of Fame, the Manitoba Hall of Fame. But, ladies and gentlemen, when you talk about hockey in Manitoba, Paul Baxter, 50-plus years involved in hockey, played it at, at a high level, coach at a high level, but he never became a head coach in the NHL. I still think he could have done a good job because he knew how to coach developing players and players that had a little bit less skill but he drew the best out of him. But he can always say he played in the Avco Cup Final, winning that. Played in the Stanley Cup Final, losing to Montreal, unfortunately. But coaching some of the best, uh, you know, AHL. Especially the St. John Flames. Very underrated team in the mid-90s uh, in the New Brunswick. He brought uh, a lot of flair to the squad. And with the AC with Calgary, of course, he came in after Calgary won the Cup in 89. So he was part of that, uh, you know, double resurgence of the Western Conference squads like Calgary and Edmonton and uh, Winnipeg and all that. But it's kind of bizarre. He never had a chance to uh, coach for the uh, the Jets, which tells a lot, doesn't it? You know, Manitoba born, never coached for the Jets. I would have hired him. Anyway, just the amount of uh, media alone, like the media scrums. How does it how does it feel your 51st year in organized hockey there, Paul? Anyway. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the podcast. Give me a like, subscribe, or a comment. Everything's appreciated. Monetization is not part of this uh, uh, channel, so if you do leave a subscribe, it's because you appreciate what we're doing for hockey fans across Canada. And uh, if you like it, tell your friends. And if you don't like it, don't tell nobody. Have a good day. Bye.